Tyler Valava, I am Monty Beetham. You are watching Once a Warrior, and joining me in the wall today is a cult hero when we talk about Warriors players, and that is Yafeta Paliasina. You're right, lad. Tyler for Monty. Thank you for having me on your show also. Okay, we see the background straight away. Uh, the whole heritage board. So where are you and what are you up to, Ulz? Um, yeah, so uh, the background there, obviously, it's the heritage board for all the players that play for Hull of C. So, um, yeah, I'm up on there. I'm number 1111, so it's uh, pretty easy to remember. Um, and my role is uh, I do the player welfare role here at Hull of C. Okay, since you know your heritage number for Hull of C, what's your, what's your Warriors number, man? 93. He's spot on. He is spot on. You're Fetsa Paliasina. Okay, also, how long have you been away for? Uh, I've been in the uh, England now for 17 years. I know it's uh, it's, it's gone so quick, um, but this is home for me now. So, yeah, it is home, mate. But there was a place that you would call home and make it your home, running off the back fence. And with highlights like this, uh, you'd understand why you would not be forgotten. Here's Paliasina. Look at him go like a raging bull. Paliasina. Oh, he's gone right through them. What a carry! What a charge! Paliasina, the human wrecking machine. Paliasina bursting back. Oh, the big fella! This weapon of mass destruction! Paliasina, like a man possessed, he has gone through them like Superman! Paliasina! And the rhino is away and running! And now Paliasina, Mr. Effecto! He is Effecto! Paliasina, still going! Paliasina! Fix, when you watch that back, uh, you see that highlight reel. Uh, what comes to mind, man? Just, the, oh man, I, I, I used to get a big rush, you know, playing especially the home games, you know, the crowd getting behind you. Just that that energy that the, the crowd would bring, and that would, give, that would lift me and it would lift the team. The, the Warriors supporters, they're, they're, they're massive. They're massive for the team. And um, like I said, well, I just got a huge lift um, from their support. Um, and it's something I love doing, and I used to feed off that energy. Um, whether it was carrying the ball or trying to put a shot on, it was um, they played a massive part. And yeah, as just looking back at it, it just gives you goosebumps, and something I just enjoyed and loved doing. The first time I saw you play was Papatau Panthers, uh, and you were running literally through the whole team. Uh, and that's something you did later on in life. The way you would run the ball was powerful, it was straight, and there was no handbrake. Uh, was that something you prided yourself on? Absolutely, definitely. Um, it was pretty tough, you know, especially with the South, with South Auckland teams, man. All them kids were, were big and strong, just as strong. So I always try to be as strong as I could and, and you know, pretend I'm not injured and, and just run as hard as I could. And that, and that was basically it. Um, thankfully, I'd get through most of the times, but we had some great kids in, in that competition. You went from Papatau Panthers to Hibiscus Coast Raiders. Uh, Bluey McLennan, who was a Warriors coach, was there. Um, how good was he in that part of your career and how did he help develop you as a player? Oh, he was... He, uh, Brian McLennan played a massive part. I think, um, obviously, I was enjoying my time just playing with my mates at Papatoi. And I remember Brian McLennan coming to my house with Tony Benson as assistant. and. Um, I said, look, man, we, we'd like you to come to Hibiscus Coast. And I was like, Hibiscus Coast? Where's that? I didn't even know where it was. It was over the shore, and I was thinking, oh, man, I, I just want to stay here and pop, just hang with my friends and play with my friends. But, um, yeah, that that's how I got picked up at the Warriors. So, thankfully, um, yeah, I made the choice to go over to play Bardicard. Um, obviously, that was the top comp uh, in New Zealand then. Um, and like I said, Bluey played a massive part. And, and just my understanding of the game because obviously when you're playing in your age group and that you're, you're just running hard running straight and you can get through and score tries whatever but um yeah he, he he was a smart coach um and that was definitely obviously the reason how i got picked up at the warriors was and i'm um, thankfully that you know we managed to convince me to go up to hibiscus coast with some there's some great people up there great club um and i love my time up there so Big shout out to everyone up at Hibiscus Coast. I think it was early on, one of the first times we saw you. You were training at night, you come through the day, uh, and uh, I believe you were tasked with a role to offload as often as possible. Do you remember that time with Daniel Anderson? It was the, probably the first time we were up against you. Yes, I remember it was after uh, one of my Hibiscus games, and um, Daniel Anderson said, look, I need you at training next week uh, on the Monday. So I said, yeah, that's yeah, cool, I'll, I'll be there. 
Um, I think we had a lot of injuries. So we, I think Big Mark Tukey was out. Uh, Justin Morgan was out. I think Logan Swan was out. So we were pretty skinny in the middle. I didn't know I was going to play at the time. Uh, I just remember Daniel said, look, playing Northern Eagles, uh, Adam Muir was the back rower. And he said he would offload at every, uh, he'll always offload. So I want you to offload at every opportunity you can uh, during the training session. I just remember the first couple I got away and then I kept doing it, and then the tackles were getting harder and harder. <laughs> right up against Villa, big jazz, and I think everyone was getting annoyed, but I was just doing what Andrew was asking me to do. Um, but, yeah, I was bit busted after that training session. And, and yeah, then Ando said, look, mate, um, you're going to be making your debut this week. And, I, like, I was only turning up just to do that post session, and then I'm called into the first team. So I was, uh, I'll always be grateful to Ando um, for that. He gave me my first opportunity. Uh, playing first grade, I was buzzing. That moment Ando said to you, you're playing first grade when you thought you were just helping out. Um, do you remember the emotions and, and, and how you felt? And were you surprised how how weak uh, the first grade side was and then even going to a debut match against Northern Eagles and you're throwing some of them around? Uh, you know, there was the realisation that, man, you actually are pretty good at this. You're, you're a bit of a brute. <laughs> no, I just, uh, I think... You know what's funny? Like the main, the main thing I was thinking about was I'm going to be playing against my hero, Steve Menzies. Steve Menzies. Um, that's all I could think about, and not not the debut, but I'm now playing against Steve Menzies. He was my hero growing up. Um, he's the reason why I wore headgear. People would ask, "Well, why did you wear headgear for you know protection?" I said, "No, because Steve Menzies wore one." Um, but I wasn't going to wear his old school ones. I was always going to wear the modern day ones. But um, I just remember, yeah. Yeah, I've got cards, playing cards of him at home. Um, I've got this big poster and I framed it. It's a picture of um, Steve Menzies tackling me because he was a he was a, he was a hero of mine playing. He was just a great player. I remember also, <laughs> I didn't tell my parents at the time and my dad was coming home from work um, and he heard on the radio, like, um, I'll, I'll be playing. So I never told them. And then um, I just, you know, how the call, the... And I was like, oh, shucks, I might be getting in trouble here. Yeah? walking to the garage and my dad's like, hey, I heard on the radio you're playing for the Warriors to, uh, this weekend. I just put his hands out and shakes my hand. You know, proud, but he proud, but them old school, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's how my, obviously my, that's how my family found out they heard on the radio because I didn't say anything. I just wanted it to sort of not make a big deal out of um, making the debut. I just wanted to try and make it as comfortable and as uh, a normal game, try to make a normal game. But mm. Um, yeah, no, I uh, absolutely enjoyed it. And that's probably my, one of my most memorable games because we, we we won as well. And you scored a great try as well. Was, I know that game. Jerry Seals still, right? It was the old wraparound dummy came back on the inside. I didn't score many tries, mate. I was like you. I, I averaged one per <laughs> 10 games, but uh, that's all good too. Also, let, let's talk about a badge of honour because we have a lot of injuries in rugby league, uh, but then you get injuries that you have in car crashes, which are ruptured spleens. Uh, Newcastle, uh, 2001, uh, was your fifth game. A wonderful game. You scored a beautiful try, which we just saw in the montage, but you ruptured your spleen. Unheard of in the game of rugby league. Uh, how, how, how hard was that? And I, I guess you must feel pretty proud because it just shows you how hard you do run. Yeah. I kind of remember it was, um, it was sort of early on in the second half. I just thought I was winded. That's all I thought it was. It was like, but it wasn't going away. And I just remember at the end of the game, going into the change rooms, going, man, my, my, i got a sore stomach. So I spoke to the doc, you give me something to take. I thought I just needed a number two. <laughs> so I was sitting on the toilet, man, and there was nothing. I was, it was just like a yeah, sore stomach mixed with being winded. That's all I can explain it as. And um, I just remember, yeah, the boys asking, are you all right, Big Jez and, and, and Harley and that? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm sweet. I think I just need to try and sleep it off. Um, walking to the car and I, man, I couldn't even walk I knew I couldn't drive, so I rang, I rang my cousin Leslie to come pick me up. So he took me home, um, and thankfully my dad was home at the time. Um, I collapsed. I don't remember. Um, I just remember waking up on the hospital bed, going into the ambulance, um, and then the, I was sort of in and out of consciousness. And then, yeah, the next time I woke up, I was drinking a drink. So doctors made me drink a drink just to see where the the injury was, um, and then I woke up again. I was on my bed, operation done, um, and uh, Daniel Anderson was there. Uh, my parents were there. Uh, Doc uh, Hannah was there. So 
um, yeah, I had these great people by my side and support. Um, but that was a scary time, probably more scary for my family. Like I said, I just thought I was winded and it was all part of um, playing with the big boys because you got to remember, I, I didn't do a preseason. I was kind of just chucked into the mix uh, to play because of injuries and like I didn't have a proper preseason. So I still had a, although I was big, I still had, I didn't have the proper physique of a full um, playing professional uh, player. Mm. So, um, yeah, that, that, that was a big uh, learning curve for me. Um going in to play with the big boys, definitely. Five games in 2001 because of the, the, the ruptured spleen. Uh, 2002, just 11. I uh, thought you would have played a few more games. Uh, what, what do you put that down to? Um, I, do you know what? I, I, I think I did have a bit of a sort of second-year syndrome. Um, maybe you heard about that. It's just sort of a, I think I sort of got come onto the scene and I did okay. Um, I think just... Being comfortable as well, that was a big thing as well. Um, thinking, well, if I'm not playing, I'll be playing Barakat, my mate's up at Hibiscus, you know? Um, so my mentality at the time was, my time will come. Instead of thinking, look, man, you've got a big opportunity to stake a claim in the, in the, in the squad. I just didn't have quite have that in 2002. Um, but yeah, I, 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 it's something, obviously, I look back and yeah, you wish you could tell your younger self, come on, man, you know? Mm. You, you got to go up and go here. Um, so, yeah. 2001, uh, you got injured. 2002, I got injured, so we didn't play much together. But 2003, um, we got to know each other a lot better. Because 2003, I remember coming into the club one morning and you were unconsolable in the corner. You were crying. Um, and I couldn't even make sense of, of what happened. Uh, talk me through that. Yeah, so we had, um, obviously, we had 2003, we had pre season, uh, we had a few games. But um, Daniel Anderson was really happy with my performance and he knew there was more. So Daniel was always a smart coach. He knew he could get the best out of you. But So he pulled me aside and said, look, I'm looking to send you to Australia for a couple of months, two, three months, uh, just so you're out of your comfort zone. That was the main thing, sort of out of your comfort zone, away from my family, just to get that hunger to sort of to learn to fend for my own and, and <clears throat> sort of be strong-minded. Um and I was like, obviously, I was like, man, I don't want to leave my family. I don't want to go to Australia. And I just remember walking out, just sitting there thinking, oh, no, I don't want to go. So I was kind of, <clears throat> I was like, I upset. And had the boys rally around. And that's when you came. Obviously, you, you said, what's up? And obviously, I explained to you what happened. And you, I just remember you saying, um, let me speak to Dan um, Ando. Um, he might say yes, he might say no, but I'll ask him. Um, I just remember you coming out and said, right, you're moving in with me. Um, <laughs> That, that, that was crazy, but I, man, the, I, was, I was only supposed to live with you for two, three months. I lived with you for about two years. <laughs> Overstayed the welcome. But I, 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 I loved every minute of it. I, I know we joke about it, but you, 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 you saved my career 100%. Um, that's the God's honest truth. Um, you lifted me, um, and I never really got to say thank you. I remember you'd always say, dude, I don't want any, anything from just, I just want you to play well and do well. That's what you'd always say. Um, but you, you definitely saved my career. And I thankfully kicked on from there, from 2003, obviously 2004, and then obviously getting to represent our country in 2005 in the Tri-Nation. So it was the kick in the backside I needed, but living with you as well was, man, I loved it. I loved it. And yeah, I some great memories and, uh, uh, yeah, I can't thank you enough for, for for what you've done for me. It's quite funny because your mother and my dad are from the same village in um, Samoa, Sabali in Savai. Uh, and then many years on, we yeah. start living together in, in Alice Lee, which was a great time. And um, in that moment, I mean, because I think you're 120 kilos and um, you, were, you were too big and you wanted to get down to 109 and, and you got to that. So there was some sacrifice that took place. Uh, talk to me about some of those sacrifices mm. and what you did because uh, I know you had to sacrifice uh, McDonald's, right? And that's something you always didn't quite get right uh, because I, I rang up my mate this morning and, and asked Lindsay Robert of a bit, bit of a story about yourself. Uh, it was during one preseason, Fekka. Yeah, it was uh, during preseason, and I know, I, I, mate, I knew that the diets and everything were strict. Um, I just remember Lindsay saying, um, "Sorry, Lindsay, I'm throwing under the bus here, but um, look, man, let's go get some McDonald's." And I was going, "Nah, nah, nah, I can't, man, because Monty will know. Monty will find out." Because no, he won't find out. 
So you know, we got to McDonald's and I wanted to throw the rubbish away at McDonald's. I said, let's eat here and throw the rubbish away here at McDonald's. Monty, there'll be no trace of evidence. He said, nah, nah, let's go back and eat at the house. So we ate at the house. Um, and then I've grabbed it and tried to shove it under the bins. And I was like, man, he's going to find it. And he goes, he ain't going to look through the bins. And I just remember in that the next, was it the next morning? I just said, hey, have you? I was like, oh, no, he's found them. I told you. And then you made us run around Ellerslie, around the mountain. Oh, man, it was crazy. And then Paul, you, you rang up Paul Lindsay to come and run it with me. But, uh, yeah, I, was, I said, I told you, mate, he'll find it. He'll, he'll find out. So those were some of the funny moments um, <laughs> back then as well. The way you'd carry that ball, uh, whether it be from a kickoff, whether it be from a tap penalty um, or a restart, uh, and I often look, uh, especially from kickoffs, uh, when I was on the 10 meter line as hooker, I'd look up and I'd see the opposition defensive line wincing uh, when you'd be coming towards them with your knees flying high. Talk to me about your mindset and what you'd be going through your mind uh, when Stacey would catch the ball and he'd offload it to you and what you were trying to do for the side. So my thought process was always, I need to get to the, I need to get past the 20 meter mark. I need to get past the 20 meter mark and at all costs. So. I just start <laughs> get ready when I see the kickoff coming because I know they're gonna got baseball bats ready to come and get me. So I just think I'm 110, 112 kilos. I'm running as fast and as hard as I can. You, you don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, so it's just sort of that the anxiety as well when you, you're charging in. You, I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, but thankfully, most of the time I, I got through. But I always, like I said, I just wanted to lay the platform. And it's worth anything, I think, as, as a prop, you know, you, that's your role to lead the team to go forward. Because if I get pole axed in that tackle, if I get driven back, then I've ruined the whole set for the team. So I prided myself on that. And then I had the guys that catch the ball for me, like Stace or Motu or Lanto Haya. Um, Herbert was, and then they go, here we go, man, let's go. And then it's just, you're just pumped. I'm just pumped. And... Yeah, it gave me a little bit of a rush every time, whether it was a dropout or a tap or kickoff. Um, I just loved that. I loved them carries. Because I was young, and my recovery was was quicker. So I was very lucky at that time. But I, I tell you, towards the back end of the career, <laughs> I definitely felt it. You put Villa Gorilla into the mix, and you put Jerry into the mix, and you put Tukes into the mix. And to me, that's like the perfect mix and what helped us uh, do be so effective in 2002, 2003. Talk to me about each one of those players and what you enjoyed about them and why uh, you guys were so freakish together. Uh, we, we all, I think we all just contributed to, to the team. Jerry was a, was a great leader. Uh, he always led the way, straight, strong carries. Uh, he'd lay the platform, could play the balls. And he always go forward and never take a backward step. Big Mark Tukey was the same. He could also put some good shots on and Big Tukes could play some minutes as well for a big man. And then you had uh, Big Richard Villasanti. I remember that 03 season. He was probably, he was up there with one of the best props going at the time. He was phenomenal. I mean, just that big hit he did on uh, Shane Webke, uh, the Brisbane Broncos game, man, that just lifted the squad, the lifted the team. That, that was probably one of the biggest hits I've seen on probably the best prop yeah. in the game ever we had some tough blokes none of the none of the games would be as hard as training no way some of the trainings we did was crazy um but it, it helped in the game because you you know that the game's not going to be as hard as training was because some of the trains we did was absolutely crazy the sample was definitely the forge domain um something we it was love hate like we hated doing it but we loved it because we could beat the backs or I don't know I, we just got a good, good. We always got great sessions out of them. Um, like we wore them shields, but them shields did nothing. It didn't do anything. You could feel the shots coming from everywhere. Because um, you got to remember, you had like Clinton Torpy, um, Francis Melly that could put shots on. I know they were in the backs, but those guys could put some big shots on. I mean, oh man, just that time. I think we were so competitive. Man, at training, we were so competitive. Um, and we didn't want to let any, each other down. And I think that's what we took into the game. And that's a special bond I, I, I say we, we had at the Warriors, just that chemistry from the youngsters and, and the senior players, um, and just not giving up. And I think just, yeah, that, 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 that played a massive part in not letting each other down. On the field, the players you enjoyed playing alongside and why? I'd have to go uh, Big Jerry Seal Seal, definitely. He was the, the mentor, sort of the, the leader. Um, for, for us in the middle because he, like I said, he never took a backward step. He never looked injured. 
it just it just kept going. He he'd fight, put he just fight all the time, trying to get forward and get that quick play of the ball. He knew his role, um, so I think he was massive for the group. And that's like I say, I, I, he's definitely someone I always enjoy playing alongside, and I try to be similar to Jerry to try and not take a backward step. Um, but he he was that he was phenomenal for the group. Um, Ali Ali was special. He was a he was special. He some of the things that I could do, man. He, he, he was he, obviously that's why he got the, the nickname Michael Jordan. He was just a freak. His offload, his footwork for a big man, was quick for a big man. Um, I've never seen a human being eat so much chocolate, but then kill it on game day. He was. Ali was yeah he, he was he, he was awesome um, and he was he was great for the group as well Ali because that's where he everybody used to go to him because he was the, the joker the, everyone used to just love his company he, he was a good dude man we just had that great mix of the senior players the the young players um, I don't know like I say just the chemistry and everything at the time was I I loved every minute of it and yeah we we had some great times. Definitely. In your career, when you were doing so well, uh, there was Wigan uh, coming around and Wigan Warriors uh, were after you. And um, you said, Monty, I want to sit down with you and I need to get your opinion on that. And we sat down and we did. We listed the pros, we listed the cons. And I remember vi vividly you telling me, also, I want to thank you so much. You've helped me realise what I want, and that is to be a warrior ongoing. Uh, and then I read in the paper the next day that you signed for the Wigan Warriors. What happened, man? What happened? <laughs> Oh, that was crack up. I know we were free, bro. We were sitting there for about an hour, a couple of hours, going through the pros and cons. And uh, obviously looking back, I, I wish I did stay longer, but just the, the the contract that Wigan offered me was was just too good to turn down. Um, <laughs> um, obviously, I had my parents to look after as well at the time. So financially, it was a, it was a good move for myself to be able to look after my parents. Um, that was my main goal was to, Give back to them, you know, the sacrifices they made for us um, as youngsters. Um, and they played a massive part in my, my me being a uh, professional rugby league player. I wanted to repay them um, back. So that was part of the big, uh, the big move to Wigan. But like I said, I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I got to play um, such a great team. Players, coaching staff, got to play for my hometown club uh, in front of my family, my friends, my schoolmates. Um, the fans back there were, were, were great. I remember we used to go up to the Sky Tower uh, there after match functions and just meeting some of the fans and the you know, hard course that are still there now supporting the team. Um, it was a, it was a great, like I said, it was a great time and we were very lucky to have such a, a great following um, to sort of in the early 2000s. And it's, um, like I said, it's memories that I'll have forever and the Warriors will always be my team. Well, Fix, once a warrior, always a warrior. And I thank you for being fearless and also not knowing what a handbrake was. Also. Thank you, Monty. Join me next week, same time, same place, and a new Warriors legend right here on Once a Warrior. Here's Paliasina. Look at him go, like a raging bull. Paliasina. Oh, he's gone right through them. What a carry. What a charge. Paliasina, the human wrecking machine. Paliasina bursting back. Oh, the big fella! This weapon of mass destruction. Paliasina, like a man possessed, he has gone through them like Superman. Paliasina, and the rhino is away and running. And now Paliasina, Mr. Effecto, he is Effecto. Paliasina, still going. Paliasina! Try!